Hello everyone, welcome back to Alpha Tauri. We are about to continue our at. We're very closely to finishing up the uh, the season here. We have Mexico, we have uh, uh, Sao Paulo, Las Vegas, and then Yas Island or Abu Dhabi. And then we will be finishing up this season. I'll be trying to do this this episode, but of course, um, I do have a bad track record of being able to follow up because, well, things take longer than I expect. So, well, we'll try and finish this uh, season, this episode. Probably will not be able to. We'll see how it goes, though. So, yeah, we're going to jump straight into Mexico. There's not too much going on here. We still have a fit, very, very healthy lead here to Red Bull. Four races to go, 150 points. Basically, Red Bull is going to need basically full points. We're going to have to get nothing to not get the championship. So we basically have already secured constructors to some degree. When it comes to driver championship, it's a little bit more open, honestly. Um, again, we can DNF twice there with Rick and still be safe. So while it's still open, it would require some pretty nasty circumstances to actually, you know, make it happen. So as long as we score some decent finishes here with Rick, we should be okay. And that is basically it. We're going to jump straight into the Mexican Grand Prix, get practice and quality done, and then we'll see where exactly we end up starting. As you just saw, maybe a little bit abruptly, yeah. we've had a pretty interesting uh, situation here in Q3, where, well, Alonso kind of made an error, and that does happen. We have a red flag. There's not actually a lot of ti times have been set here, so this could be very, very interesting. Now, because of the time left here, just six minutes, we won't really have any option. We're still going to do the two runner, and we're just going to do this to be safe, put on some new tires. Just gonna double check afterwards if we actually did that for Ricardo. But yeah, that does cause a little bit of problem for our strategy, but it's fine. And we do have fresh tires on the man's car, same for Sonoda. And we're honestly just gonna send them out right away. There's no need to really wait here. It's not gonna really change anything as you see. And the only thing that we'll achieve by waiting is generally just more traffic. So we'll do the two runner here and see where we end up exactly. But so far, the quality has looked uh, pretty promising, although Verstappen now is uh, kind of causing problems for Rick, which is not optimal. Uh, Rick should have a fairly, you know, free run here, so no improvement, unfortunately. But that's still a pretty acceptable, excuse me, starting point. Let's see if uh, Verstappen improves. He does not. So potentially, we may actually cause him some problems instead. But starting, you know, second and third. Squeezed in between the Ferraris, we have a stop and down in ninth. It's definitely more than acceptable for, acceptable for us. We'll take this for sure. As you can see, we did kind of do more laps than everyone else, but that is just how it goes sometimes. Now, I had a couple of questions on uh, a few of the early videos on how do I actually calculate the tires. So I'll go quickly through them uh, now before the race, but I'll probably make my own video with a few examples on how to do it. But generally, at the start of the race, or even before the race, you can go into either reports or, you know, pre-race report, circuit info. Both of these will have uh, this information right here. And as you can see, they're identical. Now, what this means is basically that if you run a, you know, standard synth with softs, mediums, and hards, this is what you can expect in lap time. In this case, the softs will average at 17.9, the mediums will average at 18.3, and the hearts will average in 18.8. .8. Now, this num these numbers down here is how much time is lost each lap um, expected from the degradation. And as you can see, the soft lose about 800s, the mediums lose about 600s, the hearts lose about 400s. So the way that I calculate how, how uh, many laps a tire will have an advantage for is actually really simple. We take the difference here between these two, the soft and the medium, for instance, which is 200s, and then we take the uh, the difference between these two numbers, which is almost four tenths, well, 3.6 tenths if you want, or 36 hundreds if you want to be really specific. You take that 36 hundreds, you split it uh, onto two hundreds, and you end up with 18. So in this case, the softs will be quicker than the mediums, provided you both run the same strategy, same to everything, for about 18 laps. You'll hold a pretty significant advantage here. And once you have run those 18 laps, the times will be as quick, they'll be basically the same, and the mediums will start getting advantage going therefore and out. So calculating which tire is actually best then will actually be dependent on how long can you actually run a soft tire on this track. So 
as we just figured out, the soft will be quicker than a medium tire for 18 laps. But as you can see, we can actually run the soft tire for far longer than that. So after this uh, 18 laps here, the mediums will have 200s for that lap, 400s for that lap, 600s for that lap, 800s for that lap, a tent for that lap, and so forth. So honestly, soft said, well, what are going to be better for, than the mediums for basically their entire stint? And that is basically how we, you know, figure that out. Of course, things like this can change based on how aggressively you're pushing your car. If you get your good laps, so to speak, under a safety car, things like that. Basically, this is degradation under average, you know, loss. Of course, by running aggressive attack, you can make that degradation higher. But generally, uh, again, you can calculate just about how much uh, better a time would be on. And we have the same if the mediums to the hards. There's just 200s. Difference between these is just to make it easy on me, it's actually 49, but just to make it easy on myself, it's 50. So about 24, 25 laps, the mediums are going to be quicker than the hards. And considering that the total amount of laps around this place is 71, having the mediums be quicker for 25 laps or so is pretty massive. And the pit lane isn't that long with just 24 seconds. So doing an extra pit stop here, soft, medium, soft can definitely be worth it because if we do another comparison, say the uh, the soft set to the hards that is basically 84 or 85 hundreds the degradation here is again about uh, 400 85 but on four you end up with 21 point something so the soft set will also hold an advantage over the hards for virtually their entire life cycle now of course you can push more aggressively in the hard which can kind of make up for that but this gives you a pretty good starting point on where you would want to go with the tires. And of course, degradations, the average lap times, they're very different from track to track. On some tracks, you really want to avoid, say, the mediums for the hards. On others, you want to avoid the hard for the medium. On some tracks, the soft just degrade too quickly that the advantage isn't really worth it in terms of the pit time. So there's a lot of things you might need to, you know, take a little bit of time to evaluate more or less. But that is basically how I calculate how which chai is the best for a given situation. I'll probably make a, you know, a more in-depth video on this, but honestly, that's basically it. There's much, not much more to it than that. And then we just go into a strategy view here and we try and put ourselves together a strategy that is good. Now, the standard strategies here are actually pretty decent. The AI will sometimes, sometimes we're off it. As you can see, a two-stopper here is already quicker than a one-stopper. Both one-stopper strategies, but we have a lot of tire left over. And you don't really lose a lot of performance until you hit that 30% mark. So what we can do here, if we really want to, is first of all, we'll switch this over to medium. That already saves us eight seconds. And we can also run all these stints on aggressive. And as you can see, it's actually very, very doable. If you have a safety car, we'll actually save more time. And as you see, by doing this, based on the, well, virtual stand strategy, we saved about 21 seconds. And compared to these, we save almost 30 seconds. Again, safety cars, things like that could change this up. But running aggressive will make it easier for you to overtake. The tire temps, as long as you don't go into severe overheating, aren't too bad to deal with. The degradation isn't that high. So I would really recommend you do as many aggressive or attack strats as you can. Now, since I've decided to incorporate this into this video, um, we will probably not be able to do all three races. But that is basically my thought process before the races. We have a look at the tires, what we can expect from them. And then we set up a strategy with, uh, with that in mind. Of course, we can also try and do something interesting here with the hearts. Let's say that we take this strategy and we... You know, you need to an aggressive one stopper. Still going to be pretty quickly at 36.6 there, but it's still going to be about 16 seconds slower than a two stopper. Of course, provided we can actually get to the traffic, that is one of the things that you need to actually take into mind with, you do, with doing two stoppers. Getting through traffic is going to be a pain, and it's going to be an important thing here. If you're gonna, if you think you're going to get stuck behind other cars, doing a two stopper like this, even if you save 16 seconds, can be detrimental if you spend those 16 seconds stuck behind slower cars on older tires. So you need to be confident in your driver's ability to overtake. Now that is, again, just one of the things that you actually need to take into consideration. Now, if we were to say do a very aggressive strategy here, where we do a full attack hard stint into a final soft stint, that is also full attack, how would that look? Could we save some time here? Potentially. It could potentially be a lot quicker than this strategy, as you can see. You see, it's quicker. Interestingly enough, so running full attack on the hards do save you a lot of time. In this case, we save about, eh, that's the wrong one. Nine seconds, 18 seconds, so yeah. 18 seconds running full attack. So I'm thinking we actually put a note on this one. 
We could also be a little bit cheeky here. Or not just a little bit cheeky, super cheeky. And go with that hard stint on the first stint. Because we'll be on these hearts for, what is that, about 30 laps or so? Um, and basically the only thing that's really saving us is the full attack. The AI rarely does full attack, uh, even if they have tire wear, unfortunately. Uh, because they actually respect tire temps, while we do not. So, to some degree, you could actually call this an exploit. But basically, as I said, uh, they do need to rebalance tire temps a little bit. But in this case, the hard swar did say to avoid them. With full attacks, can actually make it viable, because as you can see, we can't run the mediums on full attack. Um, even if we did, we wouldn't save a lot of time here. We can save about four more seconds. So that is the limitation there. If we run uh, the hearts on full attack, it could actually pay off. So what I'm thinking we're going to do with Sunoda here, we're going to stay, stay with this one, Rick. It should be a stable strategy for him. But we're going to do a little bit more of a experiment here with Sunoda. We're going to put him on the hearts for the first stint. And then we're going to do the soft stints afterwards. Two of them. Put them both to aggressive. And let us see here if we can actually make... As you can see, this is potentially a bit slower because we're not attacking on this final soft stint. So we can try something like this and see... Because by having Sonoda stay out longer, there should be better gaps to pin into. Uh, Safety Kaya could really screw over this strategy, but what basically is going to happen if we get one is just we switch this to a medium stint and then we just, you know, ease up on the soft stint so we still have flexibility. But we'll put Sonoda on this strategy and see if he actually runs away from uh, Rick. And worst case scenario, what's going to happen is that we'll have Rick pull Sonoda along for that first hard stint. So honestly, we should probably switch these strategies around. But that is the idea here. And again, this is supposedly six seconds quicker than uh, Rick's strategy. 35.50, 35.44. So while the ties might not look very good, Running full attack, it does make up for it, because as I said, we are running two full attack stints here that we can't do with this strategy. Basically, it just fits better into the, the strategy view. So, and again, experimented with it. Hard tires also take a lot of heat, so these should not severely overheat, even if we go full attack, but we'll see. Let's get into the race and see if this actually, you know, plays out as we wanted. This is it. Here we go with the Mexico City Grand Prix. It's lights out, and away okay. we go. So Ocone has actually done the same thing we are, put on the hard tires. But you can already see Sonoda having a little bit of a struggle there. Already falling behind Rick. And again, it's going to be interesting to see if Sonoda can make this work. Because for the first lap or so, well, the first couple of laps that is, he is going to struggle. And that is just going to come down to the fact that he is on a compound that is, uh, well, quite a lot slower. A tenth slower, in fact, for the first few laps here. And attack is basically going to be the only way for us to make up for that. But at the same time, the uh, the AI does attack for the first couple of laps. They are very aggressive. And as you can see, Sonoda is already losing out to Rick. So we'll see exactly how this plays out. Again, we're going to be tuning Rick down fairly soon. We're going to be not tuning Sonoda down. He's going to go full attack until he fits. And we'll have to see exactly when at what tire temps the, these max out, but I need to go up to about 140 to actually see any massive degradation here. So this is still looking very, very good. Tire temps still going up, but again, we don't care. It's actually not a problem. And we'll just speed things along here. But as you can see, Rick has, Rick and Leclerc has left Sunoda behind, which is honestly kind of what we expected. Um, It is what it is. Not much we can do about it. But we are going to be tuning Rick down here a little bit here. He has run a lot now. Now, a lot of people are saying that ERS balances, you don't really want to use it on when you're not fighting anyone. But for me, honestly, I haven't seen any too big, you know, uh, swings in either direction. So we're just going to leave it on for now. We are going to be pushing fuel uh, quite a bit here to the point where we're probably going to be a kilogram or 1.2 in a deficit. And for Sonoda here, degradation is currently as expected. So we can just leave him be as he is. And if he's getting helped there by science, by having science kind of pull us along, that's going to be a massive help. So, uh, honestly, he's in a very, very good spot. The gradation here for Rick is also what we expect, so we don't even need to be too worried about that. So the only thing that we're going to do here now is actually just allow uh, the fuel to run a little bit lower. We'll try and have Sonoda stick with science, but as you can see, it is falling kind of behind. That is what you're going to have to expect with the hard tire for the first 10, 15, maybe even laps. 
before the others start pitting, and then you can kind of hold them up. So the hard tires say will probably do a decent job, but they're also going to be massively helped by us getting uh, being able to hold on to signs there. Now Rick has actually gone left behind by Leclerc, and that is a bit of a concerning one. Uh, Leclerc is actually rather quick here, 28.8. So if he can keep that up. Okay, this time we had a little bit of extra speed there. But yeah, pretty quick. We'll have to see if Rick can actually make something work here. So notice already actually attacking signs. So I guess those softs, which were damaged from the start, is starting to kind of pull off a little bit here. But yeah, aggressive strategies do work kind of a little bit too well right now. Because as you can see, we are overheating both of our tires here. And it's not super negative or anything until you hit that maximum margin. That's when you really start to see the degradation hit. And that is basically what uh, Frontier has said is the main negative effect of running too hot tires. It's that degradation spikes. So as long as you don't hit those degradation spikes, running hot tires is actually preferable than running them, you know, on a lower pace setting, uh, but normal. So that is my point of view. Now, we are in a pretty stable position here, so you know that it's fighting signs. That is kind of dangerous, though, going back and forth like that. But he does have very high confidence, so we'll leave him on neutral for now. Rick here also has very high confidence. We'll leave him through at neutral. He has caught up with Leclerc. And we'll tune down both their fuel usages, and we'll see where we're at once we get to that first uh, set of pit stops. Here we are. We're getting very close to pit window. Lap 20 now. Uh, Rick will be pitting within just a few laps here. Still running with Leclerc. But as you can see, Sonona has actually now created a gap down to Paris. So he's doing pretty well here. Five seconds now behind the cars in front. And we're basically just halfway through the stint. So we're still going to be slow once Rick actually comes back out. But it should still be okay. Now you can see here that Rick actually has a lot of energy. And the reason why is very simple. We are going to be pitting before Leclerc here. And our goal here is of course going to be on the outlap to get ahead of him if we can. But also, if we are lucky here, we might actually be able to jump Gasly show... Probably Norris, but if we can jump these two, that would be amazing. And honestly, hopefully we'll have some stretch in this DRS train with Paris, because otherwise it's going to be a pain to overtake it, giving Sonoda even more of a uh, kind of an advantage, if you will. But yeah, the reason why we haven't actually pushed uh, energy any, any kind is because we'll do that on the in-lap. So we'll go full attack here. We'll actually deploy here now. And while we will be pulling Leclerc kind of with us, We'll be going, doing everything that we can now to get a the best in-lap that we can and get back out again fairly quickly. As you can see, the estimated is Albin's position. Box, box. So let's see if we can beat that. Science actually pits, show pits, going to create some more gaps. Albin actually pits too, which is going to create some pretty healthy gaps for us to, you know, pit into. And that's going to help Rick's uh, overtaking. That way he won't lose too much time while, as I said, getting by other cars. Now, Sonoda, as you can see now, is actually quicker than both Rick and Leclerc. We have made up for the errors there. Leclerc actually comes out ahead of us, even with a 1.8 pit stop. That's a little bit disappointing, but not much we can do about it. Um, it is what it is. We are going to tune down the tires to aggressive as soon as we get them up to temperature. And we'll have to see exactly how we do the overtake here now, because, because, <laughs> because Leclerc pitted. He's actually going to be kind of a roadblock here, potentially, if he is on, say, the hard tire, which he isn't. He's on another set of softs. So honestly, he might actually be very beneficial to us if we can get by Gasly here. Now, Gasly's running old mediums. Uh, Russell is also running old softs, so they'll pit soon. But we did come out in a pretty good position here, although, as I said, Leclerc came out with us, which isn't the best thing ever. But uh, I say we're still looking fairly healthy there. Rick did get by Gasly. Did not get DRS though. And what I'm thinking is that we just invest everything that we have into deploying. See if we can catch Leclerc here. Get away from Gasly too. We do not want to pull, you know, pull him along. Give him that DRS for free. Now Sonoda here will still be pushing for a few more laps. We actually had less degradation than we expected here. As you can see, it's going slower than expected. So even if we have been overheating these tires for the entire stint, it hasn't negatively impacted our durability. And actually, this will give us a faster race pace than expected because degradation is lower than expected, meaning that our tires are still healthier. We haven't lost as much lap time to degradation as we expected that we would. So with that in mind, we're actually in a very, very promising situation. On the other hand, we're just 10 seconds behind Tsunoda, so we are catching him quite quickly. Yeah? 
But, of course, the benefit that we're going to have on those final two soft stints should more than make up for that. So, yeah. In terms of race pace, as I said, uh, Sonoda should be six seconds behind Rick. So we'll see if that actually plays out by the end. And we'll have to keep an eye on Rick's degradation, because if he has lower degradation on mediums, we can probably go attack a little bit sooner. Once we go on a pit for that final stint. So, yeah. We're looking a little bit interesting here, but again, as you see, Leclerc is already catching us. So we really, really need to have two very, very quick soft stints here to make up for this uh, this hard stint of ours. And we will be pitting onto the softs when we can. The hard set I have been pretty riddled. In terms of lap times right now, we're running 121, basically 122s versus 119s. So we're about three seconds slower. So yeah, once we pit here, we definitely are going to have a little bit of a work ahead of us to actually catch up on these... Uh, Lap times, and that is one of the concerns that I basically had before this um, was staying out longer. So, if we can hold up Leclerc, that's actually going to be massive okay. because we'll be wasting his lap time. We'll also be staying with him, so we'll see what we can actually do here with that uh, that in mind. Okay. So Leclerc has caught up. He's going to probably just fly by us on the main straight here. Oh, we might actually have DRS on him. But as you can see, it's already pulled out a pretty massive gap there of 8 tenths. So we really, really are a lot slower than him at the moment. So the piss up that we will do is going to be very, very important here. And we don't really have too many good windows to actually pit into. Hopefully we can get out ahead of the Astons. But even that is going to be kind of, you know, d difficult to expect with where we are where we're at right now of course we could have stretched these hards a couple more laps but as you can see the cars behind are catching us pretty drastically so if we don't want to get into this whole drs stream with Gasly, russell versus Stapp and show norris sorry these three yeah for some reason i thought show was part of it we are gonna have to pit here and it's also gonna allow rick to just go with drs which is gonna be uh quite beneficial to us so we do come out ahead of Verstappen and Russell, which is at least a small win for us. We'll take that. And we now have to hunt down the Aston Martins. Now, in terms of tire wear for the rest here, this is pretty low. We'll have a tire advantage basically for the rest of the race. And uh, we'll have to see if we can actually make something out of that tire advantage. We might also want to just deploy a little bit here. Try and get away from Russell. Try and get away from Verstappen. Um, because again, we do not want to be the driver of a DRS train where we help the other teams. That is not uh, beneficial to us at all. So we have pulled away. And the goal here will be as said, to get by Alonso, get by Stroll. But with these gaps here, that should be no problem. We are also running quicker laps than cars in front, which we kind of have to. We are 22 seconds off the lead currently. So we're really going to need to be flying on that final stint. But then again, Leclerc has used, unless I'm mistaken, two sets of soft. So he will be on mediums for that final stint, meaning that we'll have a distinct advantage. For now though, we'll just speed things along. Asunoda speeds by Alonso. He should have no problem doing the same to Stroll. Signs Perez once he gets there. And uh, we'll see here now if we can actually catch the club because he's been pretty, pretty damn fast this race. So uh, we'll do our best on that end. But as I said, we'll be uh, trying to speed things along here. Here we are. Leclerc just did his final pit stop. He went onto the mediums as we expected. And as we know, we all need to pit again. But Sonoda has actually done a really good job. He is now seven seconds ahead. Excuse me. He's now seven seconds ahead of um, Leclerc. We're behind Paris here. Paris is currently getting actually DRS from a backmarker, interestingly enough, which is causing us a little bit of a problem with overtaking him. Uh, Got that last lap too, interestingly enough. So we are struggling a little bit with getting by here. And this is basically what uh, we thought the problem was going to be with Rick. Where he was just going to end up getting stuck behind other cars. But Paris here seems to be pushing. So he might actually be pitting very soon here now. But for Rick here, we're going to go full attack. He does have a little bit extra uh, left on his tyres. So Nodea is actually struggling to catch Paris. And that is going to be a bit of a problem. But as you can see, he was still pulling out gaps here to Leclerc. So honestly... I'm fine with this. The bigger the gap to the claw is, the better for us. And we will be pushing Rick here a little bit to, you know, before he pits. And both of them are basically on the same stage of their race now. They're just about to do the final pit stops. They're both going to go onto the same tire. But Sunoda's going to go onto a bit more of an aggressive strategy on his tire, which of course could make things a little bit more 
interesting. So we'll have to see what we do. Leclerc's now down to six and a half seconds uh, because we're kind of battling Perez. Perez being a bit of a uh, bit of a roadblock here, but it is a Red Bull. It has very nice uh, top speed, and that is making it a little bit of a you know challenge for us to actually just get by and stay ahead of. As you see, it just gets us back into the corner. So we'll keep on doing the best that we can. Um, Leclerc is probably going to catch us again, so it'll depend on how well we actually do for that final stint on where we actually do finish here. But Stappen is in seventh. Uh, as long as Russell and Stroll holds him up, that's going to be massive for us. So we'll have to see what we do with Sonoda. Uh, can probably get full attack now to the pit stop for him too. And for Rick here, we're going to have him push for one more lap and then we'll pit and that should give us a little bit of extra life on these tires just in case we need it. It's basically just a, you know, a safety precaution at this stage. Now, we actually have the has kind of block us there a little bit, but I think it's fine. Paris is, of course, still being a bit of a problem child, if you will. And he might actually decide to stay out on these mediums till the end. Uh, 20 laps, though. I don't think that's going to be viable. He's going to have to pit at one point. So Rick does now pit. Paris pits too. He actually did pit as we said that. And we actually kind of blocked Bottas there massively, uh, even though he is overtaken. Rick has 10 seconds now for Leclerc. Uh, we are on the better tire. We should have an advantage for most of the remaining laps. So honestly, uh, can we close it down? That's going to be a bit of a bigger question. But we'll do our best to make that happen. Now for Sunoda, we're actually going to be giving him one more lap. So let's see where exactly is he. He's over here. Getting hounded by a has by the looks of it. And honestly, I think we're just going to hit him. Here, right now, because I am very scared of that has. That has just screams danger to me. So, he is following. Magnuson is on fresh softs here, so he would be able to follow us. And while we might have be pitting it just a lap too early, I still feel that it's more worth it to do than to stay out and potentially get, you know, assassinated. Paris and Verstappen are both running, but neither of them are going to be pitting again, is what I was trying to say. And we'll see now if Sunoda actually can catch up to Rick and overtake him by, as expected, the six seconds here. Because I don't think anyone has really had too many big problems here during this race. But the hard run that Sunoda did, did hurt him a lot. Because he didn't have any running buddies to DRS off from. And generally, although it is theoretically quicker, we'll have to see if it's actually that in the actuality. Uh, if Sunoda can pull off, you know, six seconds with, uh, not even that, 13 seconds with attack versus aggressive, with a very slight tire advantage. That's going to become more and more equal as we go. But yeah, we'll speed things along and see if we catch Leclerc. As we can see here, Rick has actually caught Leclerc. We are within DRS. Sunoda is still four seconds behind, but he is running a bit quicker, although last lap wasn't really the case. Once again, it has to overtake, which is, again, more danger for us. But yeah, Rick is now within an attacking position and honestly if we can push enough that we can stay ahead that would be massive here so we're actually just going to full tank we're going to push a little bit and we're going to see here if rick can now push outside of the drs window because that's kind of what we need to we need to get out of the uh, class drs window and by doing so we should be able to give sonoda a fighting chance here for that at least second place and then we'll see if he can actually catch rick himself because Sunoda isn't that far off uh, Leclerc, just three seconds. And as you can see, the softs do have a pretty, although we are running full attack, we are having a pretty sizable advantage here. Rick on that last one got a 117.2. So, uh, yeah. Pretty sizable advantage. And again, we want to see exactly what we end up with as a lap time after this, because I think it was 35.44 and 35.50 that the, uh, you know, strategy planner gave us so we'll have a look and see what that actually ends up being now Sonoda is getting very very closer to just overtaking Leclerc he actually did it into that final corner I believe that is the DRS line so Leclerc is gonna have DRS on us now unless I'm mistaken he does and that's gonna make it a little bit harder here to just push away but we'll give it everything that we have uh on this you know more tricky part of the track and we have already pulled away from uh, Leclerc here, so we'll allow him to run a little bit more fuel. We'll give him a little bit of an advantage in the fight versus uh, 
5 versus Rick here. Because 3 laps, 4 seconds behind. Uh, unless Ocon, Hamilton, you know, the back marks here decide to be problematic. I don't think Sonoda is going to be catching Rick, unfortunately. It is just what it is. Um, but yeah, as you can see here, even though the strategy view said that the hardest tire would be quicker, the main concern that I had with that, well, driver skill set is another thing, but the main concern that I had with that is basically the fact that you're running, particularly at the end of hard stints, you'll be running so alone that you can't really get an advantage from the arresting up of the of the cars. Now, starting on the you know mediums, probably have been fine, but I think just uh, going hard early, well, can work. It actually did work here, let's be honest, it worked. Soon it is second, he's five seconds out of Leclerc. It didn't work against his teammate, but it definitely worked very, very well against the AI. So we can't be too upset about that. Mexico, one, two, Verstappen, eighth. I'm pretty sure that might be the end of the uh, championship right here. So with that, we might have won both of them right here, right now. So one, two, 35, 45. So Rick actually ended up uh, about five seconds quicker than estimated. But as you can see, that uh, strategy planner does work. It is gives you a fairly reasonable time of when you're actually going to end up. Of course, it's going to be, you know, a little bit wrong because you can get stuck behind other cars. Stick a little slow you down. You can do what we did there. Attack, deploy to get by Leclerc, things like that. So Nodas was, again, a little bit uh, off there as well. 3550, basically. But at the same time, it's not far off. Both of these were pretty close to each other. So... Again, uh, it's basically just Rick getting a little bit of an advantage from DRS. So no, they're not having that advantage running those really, really old hards. Basically getting left behind immediately. So that's also something you need to take into consideration. Are you going to be left behind immediately running a longer strategy? It worked. But don't get me wrong, it worked. But I just am not personally a fan of that. But it does work. It does have its merits. I'm not saying don't do it. Be free to do it as you do. Because as you can see, both of these strategies were pretty good. They did what they... Advertise, so we'll take that. Leclerc third, Paris fourth, Alonso fifth, made of 15 places, Sainz sixth, Stroll seventh, then we have Verstappen, Russell, and Norris. So, pretty good weekend altogether. Driver Championship, then we have, uh, as I said, pretty healthy lead here 72 points, which means that in theory, if we get no points for the last three races, uh, there's also a sprint in there, isn't there? But in theory, Verstappen can still make a somewhat of a comeback. I think the more interesting part in now will be if Sonoda can snatch second place from him. I think that's going to be more fun to, you know, kind of watch. Because right just then, we definitely have one. Let's just be honest about that. Still a tad fight here between Alpine and Mercedes, but again, very light. Same here with Williams and McLaren. So we'll have to see if Alpine actually scores a point this year, this season. But yeah, pit stop times. We're still in the top chart there, winning this one by a mile. No problems with the pit stops. We'll take that. And as I said, uh, this first this first race ended up more of a tutorial type, but there's been a lot of questions on how to use the strategy view, how to, you know, estimate your race times, your tires, and hopefully this has answered some of that. I'll probably make its own video too, um, but I there's been so many questions, particularly in the last couple of, uh, the last week mainly, last couple of days, uh, on a bunch of different videos that I thought that, okay, we're going to have to answer this. Uh, probably going to make the tile somewhat, you know, that reflects that. But I'll probably have this weekend out the race strategy guide, which is also going to be the also going to be a tire guide. I might combine them. I might make them separate. I don't know. We're going to have that out. And also, I will be streaming tomorrow on Saturday at the, the normal time, 3 p.m. SAS. So, yes, sorry, advertising things I shouldn't really be in this video, but I felt like it needed addressing. And honestly, I feel like the videos are the best way of doing that. So we made a lot of extra money here, too, which is very, very nice. We'll take that for sure. And also because of this, I probably am not going to be able to finish this season on uh, this episode. But we'll have to see exactly how we do that. We might do one more race, then split the last one in two, or we do two more races, because next race is a sprint weekend, I believe. Manufacture complete. We have caught up on parts, but I believe we have more that have failed. Just a front wing this time, nothing major. And the car parts here, these are the final pieces that we have. Uh, the ERS in particular could be a problem for Sonoda. But I think we can get through this without buying any extra parts. That's going to be the goal here now. And because we have basically won both championships, we shouldn't have any problems with doing that. We should be pretty pretty safe on, uh, on that end. 
So Brazil starts in four days. No research is going to be done before that. Uh, in terms of manufacture, we have a roaming project going. It's the only thing that we need to replace. So I guess we'll make a new one in, you know, now, basically. And let's have a look here. Front wings. We actually have four. Uh, we actually have the wrong wing installed on Sonoda's car. I probably forgot to fix this. And we actually have the wrong chassis as well. So with that in mind, uh, Sonoda's strategy was probably massively better than uh, Rick's. I actually hampered him. So that, <laughs> that previous part wasn't actually accurate because we weren't running the cars on the same one. But they did kind of, uh, you know, follow up with what they were. We'll have to see, though. Maybe we'll split the strategy again in Brazil. Uh, have a little bit of a, you know, redo there. But yeah, that's, uh, I didn't expect that. Uh, I wonder if the, I would assume that the strategy view takes into account the car parts too, I would hope. Because if not, then again, the chassis in particular, this is a massive downgrade, as you can see, from all intents and purposes. Um, so yeah, that's not good. We'll have to see. Well, I might need to redo that one. So, you know, the strategy might have been massively better. Uh, even though I'm not really a fan of the hard times in this game. Could definitely have been a massive uh, improvement there. That I kind of, you know, ignored. But we'll have a look in Brazil for the feature race itself. For now, though, we'll get through practice and quality. And we'll see if we can make something happen. Uh, honestly, finished position should probably be one drive in top three. And that's usually what makes us crash. So this should be entertaining. Let's go into Sao Paulo. We have a lot of extra money here. Uh, we're in October, November, December. I believe I wanted to upgrade the car part test center to its maximum level here. So we, you know, save a little bit of condition for next season. So we're going to go ahead and upgrade that. It's going to cost us 15 million. You still want to have about 20 million in the bank when you end the season. Because, well, you are going to need to build, not build. You're going to have to buy... Uh, your first car pass, your engine, you have to set up merchandising if you want extra money over the course of the season. And also, you are going to need some money to design those first new parts and also manufacture them. So there is a very good reason why you shouldn't go for broke at the end of the season. And you should save a little bit of money. But this is going to make our life a lot easier next season. We're going to get a little bit of downforce. Um, I don't remember which parts, but the engine cooling and brake cooling alone excuse me, makes up for this. And again, this doesn't cost too much in uh, in upkeep. We're going to be paying basically 2 million out of our cost cap, but honestly, that is worth it. Um, in comparison, we're paying about a million on the suspension sim already. So that should be fine. I am tempted to upgrade the suspension sim as well. Give it a little bit of a uh, boost here, but that is basically just suspension. It's either that or we do the uh, design center. Honestly, doing the design center isn't a bad idea, but we're kind of behind schedule on that one by a massive amount. And again, it's airflow, it's drag reduction and airflow, airflow sensitivity. It's basically cornering dirty air and, you know, a little bit of speed. So it's not a bad idea to upgrade, but it costs way more in upkeep. And we have kind of lost that uh, gap. Uh, honestly, I would try and focus on building more buildings that actually give boost to the cars at the end of the season, because at the start of the season, you're going to be making a lot of parts. Towards the middle, you're going to be switching more to a research focus. So there's no need for you to actually upgrade these buildings unless you are going to be making parts throughout the entirety of the season. I'd probably do them a little bit more strategically, what I'm trying to do now, which is basically upgrade them towards the end of the season. We could also, of course, refurbish these in December, get them up to maximum running before the new season, which is probably what we'll do. Uh, as you can see, it takes 40, 19 days, uh, 25 days so we can just do that at the start in December and we should be good but so what we'll actually do instead I think is upgrade the suspension sim it takes four to six days which means I should probably wait until the middle of November but honestly I might forget it and we might like miss the date by a day or two so we'll just get this upgraded now again it's not a huge boost to the suspension but the brake cooling is pretty nice and particularly also considering that we do get that same brake cooling I believe from the car pass test center as well uh, I could be mistaken, of course, but I believe that we'll do this instead. Which means that for the rest of the season, we're going to be saving a little bit of money. Um, we are still going to do research, of course, but we'll be saving money. We still have 30 million left of our cost cap here, so we have a healthy amount of funds. But honestly, I'd rather save those funds. Um, you don't need to reach the cost cap each season to have a good car. And that is kind of what we'll be uh, having a look at 
next season. Because as you can see here, chassis, we've made up it for the regulations there. The side pods, we made up there too. I would really like to get a little bit more into the chassis though, particularly the airflow for the middle, because it is, as you saw, pretty important for your high speed cornering. We've gotten a little bit into the front wing. We got none into the rear wing, but that's fine. Same for the underfloor, really. They're both kind of maxed. And getting our suspension up and running for next season two is going to be pretty, pretty, pretty good here, honestly, particularly with low and medium speed cornering. So we'll take that. The extra brake cooling too will allow us to sacrifice potentially some of it in order to get more performance. So we'll have a look at that once we actually get to the next season, though. But that is the plan forwards. Let's jump into Brazil. Let's see how we do with practice and quality. And then we'll go for the sprint itself and then the race. Let me introduce you to probably the closest qualifying I have seen, at least for the top five. From Leclerc down to Rick here, it's just, it's not five tenths, it's five hundredths. So that's pretty close, honestly. Um, yeah, that's uh, probably the closest one I've seen for the top five. But again, all of them are in the eight threes. <laughs> uh, all the way up to Rick here, and then we have a little bit of a gap, but yeah. This is um, this is really close. Pretty impressive, if you ask me. And we're also going to have a very interesting weekend here. We're going to have the sprint. And then we're going to have heavy rain for the race itself. So with that in mind, let's just quickly get through the second practice here. Again, we can't really do anything with second practice. It's basically just put on the old parts. And, you know, get ready for the sprint itself. Now, for the sprint, the strategy is going to be a one-stop. It's just... Probably never going to be worth doing a two stop, but unless we say get a safety car. But even then, it's kind of uh, risky if you, you know, want to pit from the front. But yeah, we are going to get through quality, well, not quality practice like this. We had a good quality, let's face it, second and fifth is not bad. Particularly when you can take into consideration that fifth place is half a tenth behind first here. So definitely an acceptable, uh, acceptable one for sure. Now, we don't have the best setups here, but we still have decent driver prep at 85 and 84%. Honestly, not too bad for a spring weekend, I'll take it. And as I did say here, we do have to see what the best strategy is. We might actually try and go full hard again. I'm also very curious to see, um, I'm going to actually have to go back in the video and have a look at Tsunoda. And I would be curious if I actually did check with uh, Rick if he would have that same time. Because as you saw, they did actually have kind of different car builds. Or, or if it just takes one car build as a estimation. Because that would kind of explain why Tsunoda was slower. Uh, because, again, the game does take car once builds for a lot of estimations. If it did the same here for, you know, this strategy, I would be kind of, honestly, a bit surprised. Uh, four seconds quicker. Is it actually worth it to try on the hards here? We don't have hards. Okay, so the best we can do is actually run those mediums on aggressive. I see. Uh, softs, not really doable. Everyone is going to be in the mediums. And as you see, we don't really have hards, but we could try that. So no, that has hards. He can run them full attack. It is potentially quicker, I believe. So we could do another little bit of an experiment here. I don't know. I'm so used to being this being the update button, not the admin stint button from the last game. Uh, it's just two seconds, though. To be fair, though, running mediums on full attack is probably not the play. Uh, four seconds. The problem here is going to be, of course, just staying with the cars in front for that first stint. Um, but we can, of course, have a look at what the we can expect from the tyres. And we'll go over this again like we did last time around. Uh, we can have a look at circuit info. 71 laps. Again, sprint is going to be shorter than that. Don't know how short exactly. Because they don't tell you, but we can always check here. 24 laps. So, no biggie. And we can have a quick look here on what we can expect from the compound's performance. So, the medium versus the hard is the one that we are interested in, because we will not be using the soft. Uh, if the AI does, they're going to basically run into the ground, so we're not too interested. There's a 2 tent degradation difference between these two. As you can see, 0 0.05 versus uh, 0.03, two hundreds. And the difference in these to begin with is 38 hundreds. Again, we take this minus that, or this minus that, to be more precise, and we end up with 38 300s basically so with 200 degradation difference it'll take 19 laps for the mediums to become equal to the hards and seeing that we can run the mediums are aggressive and even that doesn't really save us that much time potentially this would be doable but it's brazil any type of safety car is going to put us at a disadvantage so i think we'll just do uh we could do this be a little bit risky 
uh, experiment a little bit, honestly, and I think we will. But I would probably put him on the medium strategy. He does start pretty high up, though, in second. So if we get a good DRS train, it could still work. The main concern there is going to be, of course, if we actually end up getting Rick stuck behind him. But Verstappen is also behind us, so it shouldn't be that much of a problem. So we'll try this bit of a split strategy, see if we can make it work. It's either that or we save the, these tires for the race itself. But the race is expected to have, as you saw, very heavy rain. So I don't see a point. Uh, it shouldn't be any situation where we would rather have halves than any other tie in a rain situation. Of course, there are some where that would actually be beneficial, but those are very, very rare. So we're going to gamble on using the halves in the sprint. We're going to give Sunoda full attack for the entire sprint and see if he performs better than, well, the mediums. He should be beating them by about four seconds. And as you see, it's just medium tires. I don't know if that is our tire. It's kind of hard to see. No, mediums for everyone. So Rick here, uh, sorry, Sunoda here already with a bit of a bad start. Can't stay with uh, Leclerc really. Gets challenged by the Red Bull immediately. And that is basically what we're going to be seeing here for the first few laps. Um, basically a bit of a struggle from Sonoda to kind of keep up. And that is going to sting a little bit. But the main concern here that I have is, of course, that Sonoda ends up slowing down Rick. But honestly, that wouldn't actually be too bad either because Verstappen is also behind us. So... It's not necessarily a net negative if that happens, and we can actually live with that. But already on the first lap here, we're 7 tenths down, even running full attack, because as you know, AI2 runs full attack on the first couple of laps here. What I am thinking of doing is just telling Sonoda to let Rick go. It looks like Rick is going to get it done anyways. We're also going to have to tune him down a little bit. And we'll see now if Sunoda actually can keep up with uh, Leclerc and Paris. And if he can, that's going to be actually quite massive here. We have kind of run out of energy though, so we'll tune them both to neutral. And our cars are currently kind of running in their own little vacuum, if you will. They're running together. A little bit ahead of Stroll. Uh, if we can actually pull away from him, that would be massive. Well, it wouldn't actually be massive because it will give... Uh, it'll give the Verstappen a chance to overtake. Now, usually for sprints, I go about a third of what I would usually do. Usually I do 1.2 to 1.5, 1.6. So in this case, we're going to stop at 0.4 and be happy with that. Now, as I said, we're going to run aggressive for Rick. We're going to run full attack for Tsunoda. And we'll have to see if they actually can catch up to the car in front by the end of this race. Rick is kind of getting held up right now. But again, that is what we'd expect. We're going to allow things to just run as they are. Uh, we're not going to tune down the risk management for either right now, which hopefully will be okay. And we'll see where we're at once we get to, you know, the end of the race. We are catching Leclerc and Perez right now. The notice uh, and Rick's uh, kind of back and forth there with DRS is definitely helping. And on this track, we still have pretty healthy margins here on the tie attempt, so we don't need to be worried. The degradation isn't is following what we expect, so everything is going according to plan. So yeah, we'll see how this goes. Um, we still have just one big DRS train here. So you know that it's kind of being the link right now between uh, Stroll, uh, Verstappen and top three. But we'll see where we're at in the last few laps here. We can actually make something happen. And we have a virtual safety car. This is kind of what we expected. Uh, that could potentially cause a little bit of pain for us. Now we should be able to take a look here. Now there's the car of Piastri. Cutting it so close. That looked like an assassination attempt, I'll be honest. And then just hides him. <laughs> but yeah, we have the virtual safety car. Currently, though, we are running, as you see, with uh, Leclerc and Paris. Again, the arrest train is pretty, pretty long here. And honestly, we're just going to leave things as they are. It's just, it's going to give us a bit of energy to push with once the uh, virtual here is done. And we'll probably try and have Sunoda immediately attack Leclerc. It's still 10 laps to go. But if we can get up into, say, second place with uh, Rick, it'll give us a lot more opportunity to fight towards the end of the race. And again here, this is going to help Rick out a ton with, uh, with a bit of extra... bit of extra, what's it called? Fuel. And also, of course, the save to the tire wear. So, again, this is kind of the problem with running hard here. Uh, that two... 
two four second advantage that we were okay. supposed to hold by you know running the hard stair has probably already been lost but we also probably regain more than that by just being able to run in drs of cars and quicker tires and again to, more towards the end here is when we'll actually start seeing the benefits of uh of what we've done so so no that's still looking good honestly it's not a bad idea to run these hearts it is working out for us but if you see it the de degradation difference here it's not too big and that's going to be the the main concern but right now i think we're happy running first and third uh again should probably try and push a little bit more get away from leclerc if we can get out of his drs range that would be great and i think we have so that is looking pretty good but stroll is out here and we have another virtual car on keep an eye on debris again. Keep an eye on debris. Which is going to be even worse for us. Whoa, 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 whoa. Almost took out the Ferrari there too. That's actually kind of negative for us because it gives the staff in a free uh, place. But yeah, we are going to be... Basically, as you can see, they are actually recharging this even without me telling them to recharge. It's better just leave it as it is. That way they will actually maintain their position. If you recharge, they can fall a bit backwards under the virtual. Because right now we're basically driving to the limit of what we're allowed to. But we're still asking to see time temps are going down, durability losses are going down, fuel is going up. So honestly, just leave things as they are for virtuals. And your drive will actually do recharging, slowing down, basically taking care of everything themselves. Now... I'll have to see exactly how we want to play this once it actually does restart, because, well... We could try and just get away now here with Rick. Because, again, because of the double safety car, we have now a position where we can attack for these last four laps. It's not actually a problem. The main thing is going to be can to get by Perez, and honestly... It should, but as you can see, the tire degradation isn't that different at this stage. Uh, mainly because of the said safety cars. So, so no, should have no problem getting by right now because, well, being challenged a little bit, because, well, uh, Paris is outside of the arrest. For Ricky, we're just going to be pushing a little bit more. It should still be okay. And we'll have to see what we do with Sunoda because I would assume because of the extra tire wear that they've saved, uh, Paris now might also end up going a little bit more aggressively on the attack to... Kind of keep himself safe, if you will. And as you see, Sonoda is falling backwards. And he fell backwards immediately. So, what I assume is happening is that the medium runs now are going to go attack as well for these last couple of laps. And that's not going to go well for Sonoda. Um, again, we are still slower. That's the thing. Particularly with the virtual safety cars, we do not have a tire advantage at this stage. And if the other cars tune up their cars as well, we're going to have a bit of a, you know... Not the best of times. Let's just put it like that. Looks like they haven't actually tuned it up. So it could just be Paris trying to push a little bit there to keep himself safe. So we'll have one more chance here now to get the overtake done. We'll save energy and we'll try and get the overtake done if we can't with the DRS here. Into that second DRS zone. But we'll give it the deploy here. Just push everything that we have. And this is when we need to, you know, get the overtake done, and we do. And we'll just keep it on deploy for now, which should be enough that we will not be losing out during the course of this, uh, these last few corners, if you will. What's happening is still running the face. We have Sunoda now in charge of the RS train. So again, the hearts isn't a bad strategy, but it is very reliant on you running aggressive strategies. Uh, to put it into that, uh, Put it into that perspective. We will take that. Another one too. Uh, honestly, very, really, really good. We have penalties here for Paris and the staff, and we'll see if they actually end up serving them once the race itself gets underway. And I'm very curious about how much rain here we're actually going to be getting because it says, it says heavy rain. But honestly, having extra set of hearts might actually be worth it. But as you can see, the rain starts pretty late. Um, like, really late doesn't start until lap 30 and then it massively ramps up up around lap 30 uh 8 37 so what we might do here is try and stay out on a dry tire until we get to this point and then we jump on wets uh maybe even we'll jump on wets around here we'll have to see 
but we need to make it at least to lap, say, 35 safely. And while the hearts can get that done, I don't know if that is the best strategy. So let's see if we do something like this. Maybe. It'll get us where we need to be quite safely. So I think that's what we'll do. Run a... Inside of this, so we do mediums first. Because this is... It's just, again, 16 laps. It's a pretty short lap. It might be a little bit risky from that perspective. But I think we do this. We're going to do this for both cars. Start on the softs, go on the mediums. And the reason for that is actually incredibly simple. And by doing this, we'll be pretty safe if the ring comes later. If it comes earlier, we can adjust the strategy. So this is what we'll do. Doing a hard stint here could also work, don't get me wrong. Uh, but at the same time, even if we're running aggressive, well, it would mean that we can't run the stint aggressive. And it would be probably slower than the other two strategies because of that. Now, also because we are have rain in on the horizon here, we can't really do much in terms of tire strategy, what we want to do. We could try to softs, but again, the limit here is just going to be uh, basically when the rain arrives. That is our limit. That's going to be the problem. So we'll use the two, two quickest compounds and we'll deal with that from there. But in this case, if we wanted to calculate here, uh, as you can see, we have about 3100s between soft and mediums. The softs have a 3100... Uh, Quicker lap time advantage. We only care about the first two numbers after the decimal here. So 70 or 1. Again, goes up to 30. Then you get 10 plus 1, 31. And that is the difference. And if you see the degradation difference here, it is 300s. Uh, degradation difference being that for this one, 31 split on 3. 10.3 uh, laps. So... 10 and a third lap is when the softs will become equal to the mediums in terms of pace. And after that, they'll be losing 300s in lap time every lap. So, softs are still pretty good. Uh, the medium to hard conversation is, uh, conversation is even, you know, more extreme as we went over before the sprint. 38 split on 2. So, 19 laps before the hards become equivalent to mediums or the medium start falling off compared to the hard. So with that in mind, I think we're just going to do that. The soft to medium stint, it'll work. Uh, of course, unless the rain comes earlier, then starting on the mediums might have been the better choice. But we don't know exactly when it's coming because we haven't updated the weather center. But I'm happy with that. It's five, basically, it seems to be about five or so laps in either direction where the rain can arrive. So we expect the, the rain to arrive here, lap 35. But it could arrive here. It could arrive here. Could probably arrive outside of those windows too. But that is mainly what I've seen. So if it arrives here, we'll just go full attack on this medium stint. If it arrives here, we'll just, you know, slow it down a little bit. And we'll know as we get a little bit closer to, you know, the rainy period itself. Now we're gonna do the, as I said, the both strategies, both strategies, both cars are gonna run the same strategy here. We're gonna be running one too. And we'll see what we can actually make out of this race here. We're not too far. Who will win? I see some hard runners, so some of them are planning to do some cars that are planning to do some cheeky stuff. Damn, that's low. Russell, Gassi, Orko, and Verstappen, Hamilton, so some penalties to get a flight. That was the wrong button. I wanted to press that one. But yeah, um, this is probably going to get quite interesting then. Because if uh, the rain arrives earlier, which is kind of what we'd expect with them choosing to go hards, we'll have to see if we might, might need to readjust our strategy. Because again, this is when the rain arrives, lap 35. Uh, again, it's going to get incredibly wet, incredibly fast. And we'll have to see exactly what happens with this window here. It might be good, but good going into this for about six laps. We'll have to see if it actually is worth it or not. But for now, we've had a really, really good start here, honestly. No problems, no whammies, no anything. Uh, if we can, again, pull away from, say, Leclerc here, have Sinoda and Rick run their own little DRS train, that would be amazing. But uh, energy is going to be probably one of the main concerns that's going to stop that. So for now, we'll tune them down. We'll also tune down the tire usage. It has been a pad too high here, honestly. But looks like it isn't too bad yet. So tuning that to aggressive should kind of fix that. In this case, we'll be running the fuel down to probably two and a half kilograms or so. Uh, and the reason why we're running it so far down is incredibly simple. 
it's going to be very, very wet here. If it actually reaches this peak, we're going to save so much fuel during this period that two and a half, probably even three kilograms, is still going to be too little. Um, like, too little used. We're going to need to use more during that rainy period. So we'll be pushing uh, the fuel a little bit there to see what we can make up for. And in terms of the gaps they're forming, they are already starting to get kind of good. And I kind of forgot to check this, but pit lane time loss is about 24 seconds. So... We'll see exactly how we make up for that. Now remember, pit lane time loss is basically how much time you spend in the pit lane. Meaning that to actually get a proper estimation of uh, you know where you're going to come out, you're also going to have to deduct the time the other cars spend doing this. So even if it says 24 seconds, it's actually a little bit quicker than that. And that's the case for most tracks. That's why I say that it's fairly inaccurate at times. It'll depend on asset, how quickly the other cars are going to do this. Uh, I don't know if the pit lane exit is here, because then it would be 24 seconds to here. And of course, uh, cars going flat out won't lose much time to you at all. Now, while I've been babbling, we have left Leclerc kind of behind. Um, we're still going to stretch these tires a little bit more here. Because again, the higher we get out after the pit stop here, the better. And in this case... We've oh. got a yellow flag here. Crash involving multiple cars. What happened? As we look to Decido de Lago. Not a lot of wiggle room here. The cars coming together right there. Yes, they did. That's a bit unfortunate. Luckily, no safety car. And I say luckily because it would actually bunch up the field. Paris Pitts. I assume he is kind of doing the same thing that we are. So he comes out and pretty far back here as you can see so we'll have to see exactly what we want to do here probably go attack now for a couple of laps try and make up for it or well, well get in there a little bit earlier uh as you can see here the wet has moved um we're gonna have to stretch those mediums a little bit the water is now expected on lap 36 37 35 was our previous one so it is moving a little bit further away which means that the end of the race, too, is going to be a little bit uh, more interesting, for sure. But yeah, for now, we'll run an attack maybe for two, three laps, depending on how long these tires last. Again, we do need to kind of stretch them, so running aggressive would probably have been a better choice, honestly. But I think what we're going to do here is... Sunoda's going to be pitting this lap. And then we'll have Rick pit the following lap. And as I said, we do need to keep these tires alive until about lap 40, so... Running aggressive might not be uh, viable for the entire thing, but we can just run standard like three, four laps, and that should make up for it. There we go. We're in danger now. It's fine, though. And then we just pit Rick this lap. Let's see exactly where Sunoda comes out here now. It's a good, not the worst place to come out. He does have two cars in a DRS train in front of him, which is going to be a little bit painful. But even so, it should still be okay. Uh, the main thing is now we are going to tune tires down a little bit. Uh, running aggressive is still going to be a tad risky. Um, but as you see, it's estimated to last until lap 40. So not really. We should still be okay here. That should be okay to just run them on aggressive. We also have some cars pitting, which is making the notice life a little bit easier. He does come out uh, pretty, you know, squarely had a rick there. And depending on the overtakes here now, we're going to have a little bit of an interesting one. So, in terms of tyres, the top three here do need to pit. But Stappen can stay out. So can Russell. Uh, the, ga the game here, the, the goal here is going to be to create some gaps that we can, of course, exploit. Now, we are getting close to the point where, you know, as I said, we'll be tuning down the fuel. Uh, we'll actually just tune it down now. Should be okay. And the reason why I've chosen 2.5 kilograms is because it gives us a little bit of wiggle room in case I underestimated. Some tracks, you know, gain, you will gain more fuel than others. I think you gain a fairly large amount on this track, but worst case scenario would just run the entire wet stint in attack mode. So it's not a big deal. There we go, the other cars are pitting. Leclerc should be pitting this lap, and some of them actually gone on to halves. Most have gone into mediums or new softs, though. Well, Paris is the only one that has gone on to a hard tie, to be precise. But we have caught Verstappen now, um, so as you can see, staying out on the hard side might not be the best option for him. But he could be a wonderful, and I mean absolutely wonderful, kind of doorstop now for dealing with uh, dealing with other cars. I should probably 
I probably should have waited there with the overtake until, you know, we had DRS to help us along. Because now we're giving the Stappen kind of a free ride here, as you can see. It's going to take a couple laps to kind of dislodge him, uh, but that's okay. It's not the worst thing ever. In terms of the wet here, it's still coming around lap 37, 38. Uh, it is going a little bit further, you know, away, but it's still okay. Wouldn't be too worried. The Stappen has been dislodged. Rick is now within DRS. We'll have it on the straight. And Leclerc is still out on those old softs. He's being a bit, uh, we've had a crash on track. bit insane here. Schumacher crashes. That, I'm very sorry about that. that didn't look too bad, so as you can see, he's still in the race. But yeah, uh, I'm curious what Leclerc's plan is here, because the only thing he can do really now is going to be go on another soft. Um, proper Ferrari strategy at this point. Because what I have a feeling is going to happen is he's just straight up going to puncture. Because as you can see, it's still pretty far away to get to that rainy period. The scary part here is if he gets that puncture while, you know, following us, that's going to be horrifying. But yeah, we have gotten ourselves back into first and second right now. We can probably push these tires a little bit more if we really wanted to. Rain is going to hit around here. But the question that we're going to have to ask ourselves is actually pretty simple. How much is this going to be? Because as you can see, the grip levels here still kind of hint towards this being potentially still a dry tire compound. So we might need to stretch it to lap 40 and then go into the wet. So we'll have to see exactly how that plays out. But yeah. Uh, Leclerc finally does pit. Again, that is uh, peak Ferrari strategy to pit uh, seven laps before it starts raining. Well, eight, ten maybe if we're generous. That is still peak Ferrari strategy. Puts him down to the 13th. An older set of uh, softs. But as you can see here, uh, we could probably go a little bit more aggressive on our tires too. But for now, it's okay. We'll leave it like this and we'll see where we're at once the rain actually starts. Another incident where we had multiple cars crash. Um, and now we've had a crash. This does leave things kind of worrisome in terms of... Right, so this was the is this Ferrari on Ferrari? Dangerously close to each other. No, it's uh, oh, Ferrari on Alpine. Unable to keep out of each other's way. But yeah, this is going to make things a little bit more dangerous now once we actually get to the rain itself. With a lot of cars here having, you know, bumps, hits, and generally just all the things that could, you know, negatively impact. Both us and them. Now, the Stappen has actually gotten himself onto a soft side here. Um, interestingly enough, wet weather has been predicted in three minutes. And as you can see, we actually do have healthy leads here to the cars behind. So what we can do, if we really want to, is we can probably gamble on Inters if we need to. But as you can see, yeah, by lap 40, we might actually need to stretch these um, mediums a little bit longer. Because as you can see, the wet weather has once again moved a little bit to the right. And it seems to do that whenever we have incidents, in uh, interestingly enough. So we are going to have to keep these tires alive until lap 42 at the very least. Uh, that shouldn't really be a problem. And the main thing now is going to be, I think Verstappen and Paris are going to start catching us a little bit. Yeah, just about. Well, Verstappen is catching a lot, but then again, it's not a problem. So now you have three. The main thing now is how quickly is this gonna, rain going to go up. And as you can see, it's barely tickling the ground at this stage. It's a very, very light drizzle. In four minutes is when the fun begins. We have a little bit more incoming. Okay. Uh, because then we're going to get hit by a medium rain spout, if you will. But with, as I said, with the gaps that we have here, if we need to, virtual safety car, a full safety car, our car. Uh, this is kind of problematic. I think we paid onto Inters. It is four laps until rain. Well, fifth with this one included, basically full wets. Uh, but depending on the safety car and of course the wear, if we pit, pit onto wets now, even behind a safety car, it's going to absolutely shred those wet tires. So what I think we would do here is uh, we're going to pit onto Inters. Those inters are still going to get shredded, but I think they'll give us a better chance of getting away and getting, you know, a little bit of a gap before we do pit to wet tires. It allows us to stay out longer, but this is kind of a dilemma, honestly. I'm a little bit unsure what is the correct choice here. 
But as I said, we are going to gamble on getting in on Inters. We have the gaps here. Alonso's going to go ahead of us. Uh, Perez might go ahead of us. But I think that that is a gamble that is worth doing. And we are going to double stack too. Uh, just to get that done. Norris and Stroll out. What did they now, do? Who is that? Now that looks like Lando Norris. Oh. Okay, so Norris got on the curb. It was wet. He lost the red grip. Slid into Norris, and Norris kind of lost control, hit the wall, I guess. Okay, we have other cars pitting as well. Alonso stays out. Double stack in, not really super effective, but we did come out in second. And they've also gone for the Inter tire. And again, I think this is the best option that we have right now. Uh, we're actually going to go conserve here, even though it's behind a safety car. And this this is basically just a desperate attempt to try and keep these tires alive a little bit longer, because they're going to heat up pretty quickly here. Uh, even behind the safety car, as you can see, we're already getting into cooking territory here. 105 should be, you know, severely overheating. And we are quite a lot above that, so... Why? Okay. We actually fell backwards under the safety car. That is very annoying. Because the game... Ex the reason is actually incredibly simple. The game is saying that we are on the wrong tyres. Uh, and because of that, we're falling backwards under the safety car. Which is pretty annoying, honestly. Um, so, yeah. No, nothing we can do about that is actually going to sting. It would actually have been better for us to stay out on the wet tyres with this, but in theory now, because the others are wrong tyres for the uh, for the you know occasion, if you will, you'd expect us to be able to move forwards now. So we'll see if that actually happens. Does not look like it. So yeah, it's going to get wet now pretty quick. We're going to basically have to pit again. And honestly, I think we're just going to pit now. Uh, pit on the wets. So, it did harm this little gamble of ours. The... I assume everyone else is going to be pitting too. Yeah. So, let's see where we actually do come out. And because of the fact that our pit box is at the end there, we got incredibly shafted. So, yeah. That was... Uh, that was bad. Honestly. That was really bad. Nothing we can do about it at this stage other than try and make the best out of it. But yeah, that was not a... That was not a good thing at all. Uh, we're going to, of course, as I said, try and make the best out of this. But that was... That is a bit annoying. Uh, I don't think we were struggling to keep up on the safety car. But if you're going to have cars falling backwards because of, uh, you know, being on the wrong tire for the occasion... Then you also need the opposite to be true. Then, in that case, once it became rainy and everyone was on the dries, they should have, you know, been punished too. But uh, we are going to go very risky here. It is what it is. Uh, sometimes you just get the uh, couple of game. I should honestly remember that that is how it works. Taking that into account, but I didn't, so that is also on me. But yeah, we have Rick here now with a bit of a crash, damage to suspension. Oh dear, a crash! There's been a crash. And he received a penalty to uh, the boot. What so exactly happened here? Turn four. With not much room to move. I guess that's fair. Rick did kind of push him out of track there. But yeah, we'll uh, try and fight this back. Try and make the best out of it. But yeah, it is it is frustrating, but it is what it is. We'll just have to deal with it best that we're able. But that definitely did cause a uh, bit of a you know, damper. And as I say, we did lose a lot of performance too from the tires. So Rick's going to have a pretty bad race here. We might, we'll have to consider if we need to tune him down. Uh, also, in terms of overtaking here, it's actually quite difficult. So the only thing we really can do here is just harvest and then make moves. And as you see, a tire severely overheating. We are running above the line, but we aren't losing too much performance, so it's fine. That is basically how we, you know, do those estimates, anyways. Okay, so we're going to run neutral for now. But once we get to past the main straight here, we'll tune, tune it on because we use an awful lot of energy pushing all of this. So we'll go a little bit more aggressive once we get to the uh, to the end of the straight, so to speak. And that should hopefully give us that little bit extra oomph that we need to get the, the Merc here. See if we can get Rick to do some pretty, you know, massive maneuvers here. 
Keep they use this entire battery. So yeah, I'll yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'll try and manage this, and we'll see where we actually get to by the end of the race. We also do have that you know dry period here. We're going in, and this might be worth it, but we'll see. We have a virtual safety car. As you can see, Russell and Sainz have both opted to jump into the pits here. We are getting into you know the potential inter territory here. So what we're going to do here is actually just do that, jump in for Inters. I think Sonoda is unfortunately just a little bit past the pit lane. Yeah, he was. So we will be pitting him too. But the goal is going to be, of course, going on Inters, see what we can do here. But it's not looking good. We've had troubles with uh, overtaking and Hulkenberg there. Just a light tap. That should be fine. Okay, he is actually out. That's because yeah, everyone does actually pit. And Rick is actually going to fall back a little bit more again because, well, penalty for one, but also because pit stop, you know, lineups, if you will. So, Sonoda here is going to do the same thing. We're going to get him into the pits. And we'll see what we can do here because everyone should be going off the inters. And we are, of course, going to run these full attack till the end. It's just how things are going to have to be. So, once again, there, pit stop done. We actually have a bit of a longer pit stop, though, so actually fine from that perspective. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if we can actually get Sunoda up into, say, a podium position, which is what the goal was before this race. And we'll see what we can actually do with Rick as well. He is going to have a bit of a rough little last 12 laps here. Okay. But uh, it is what it is, unfortunately. Uh, that safety car thing is a bit unfortunate, of course, but uh, not much we can do about it. We'll just have to deal with it as we, as well as we can, honestly. And uh, for Sonoda here, getting by the Ferrari is going to be important, but it's also going to be difficult. Because we do, as I probably said earlier in the other rain races, rely a lot on our DRS to get by cars. Same here is going to be his case for Rick. Uh, he also has a, you know, a has in front of him. They do tend to be pretty wide at times. But we'll see what we can actually make out of this. For now though, Sonoda will be trying to again get the Ferrari. Be switching between harvest and attacking a lot because that is really the only way we can just get by by sustained, you know, aggressive movements. And hopefully we can get a little bit higher before the end of this race. We're stopping in fourth though, so it's still not a tragedy in terms of uh, you know the points here. We're still pretty safe. Now we did get next to the Ferrari, but because of the fact that we're gonna need to harvest, we're gonna fall in behind again, which is just unfortunate. Also, because of the extreme overheating of tires here, we are going to tune them down to aggressive. Uh, because this is just a tad now, too high. Here, and that actually does cause a bit that. of problems here, with 105 being the maximum. You can see just how much water is on the track. Clearly unable to take evasive action, but no matter the severity. I assume since he hit his rear there, it probably had suspension damage and got, you know, collected from that. For now though, we're going to tune both of them to neutral because we are under a virtual safety car. Um, again, we are going to lose a little bit of money from this. It's just how it be. Virtual safety car is in action. And we'll have to see if we can actually, you know, get something done once this one is over. We had a lot of virtuals here, a little bit of problem. But again, uh, that one that actually put us on the Intus is probably the worst one because, well, we did get the piss ups done pretty nicely. It did put us into an incredibly okay. poor position in terms of, uh, you know, where we actually did end up. So, we'll try and get some moves here for Sonoda, for Rick, and we'll see where we're at when we get to the end of this race. Been for Magnussen, but we're getting really, really I'm close to the end here. Sure uh, we had another crash. Take a look at the replay. Now, this was that a is one. Rick. You can see how tight it is. We just can't. Get... <laughs> I imagine their confidence will have taken. The fact that Rick just gets chucked out there a little bit, and he got the penalty too again, too. Oh, of course he did. Uh, suspension damage was still was already there, so it's not anything massive from that regard. But yeah, this has been a pretty bad race. Um, just you know how things have gone. However, show does sorry, so Nora and I does actually have an opportunity to attack both Alonso and Show. The Williams up in fourth here. Which would actually be massive for their little, you know, charge. So let's see if Choe can actually protect himself. Uh, probably not the best angle to look at the defense from. Protect himself from both Alonso and Sonoda coming for his, uh, his life here. 
Uh, Sonoda might actually get Alonso here, although we are running out of energy, so that's going to kind of put a hamper to that. But uh, yeah, Rick did not have the best uh, race. Paris wins, Verstappen third. So that fourth place from Show is going to be massive, seventh from Piastri. But yeah, it is a bit frustrating that not only did we get full back due to being on the wrong tire behind the safety car, uh, but that we also weren't given... But the... Oh no! That was Danny Rick winning the championship. That was what that was. Uh, that's a problem. I should have saved that. Well, we should have watched that, but I'll have to see if I have an autosave I can go back to. That makes it viable. So go and I just have a look at that ending animation. Uh, I'll be back in a second. And there, the Alpha Tauri driver with a momentous title win. They've clinched the driver's championship. And no doubt, the Stappen fans will be celebrating the Dutchman's achievements. Six wins now in this season, they're not flagging. A mighty impressive victory. And that means, here in Sao Paulo, it's party time. So, it was literally just a, you know, mention that, oh, an acknowledgement, if you will, that Rick was actually champion. So, nothing too major. These, these are not the results of the race itself. It was a strangely mixed weekend for them. We saw one driver put in a strong performance, but it was a different story for the other. Definitely positives there, though. So yeah, again, um, they just acknowledged that you won. Nothing too major there, honestly. And as you can see, these are not the correct race results. We'll jump into that in just a second. Uh, but yeah. It's just basically an acknowledgement, nothing too major there that we missed, so let's get back to how it really went down. Again, just uh, got the autosave before I press continue, and just went back and replayed the race from that, just to see what that was before that I actually skipped. Nothing too major, but again, it's nice to at least see the little bit of acknowledgement that you have won at this point. We pulled it off, uh, I think. Um, Hopefully we saw it, but I did make a copy of the autosave before pressing continue, and that I think is what allowed us to just do that quickly. But yeah, as you saw that we have actually won the championship according to what they said, and Perez first, Verstappen third. Again, uh, we'll see if we can actually replicate it. So Noda end up sixth, uh, Denerick eleventh here. So not a good race from us, but Williams scoring fourth, and Piastri scoring seventh is going to be huge for their teams. And with that, as we said here, Rick is now undisput undisputably the champion. Zenoda, third here, going to have a bit of a hard time catching Verstappen, unfortunately, but that is just how it goes. And then in Constructors, as I said, with the points they have scored for McLaren, uh, Williams, unfortunately, they're the two battling, so Piastri's uh, performance there did kind of get marred by that. But Merck is now close to Alpine, too, so we'll see how that battle ends up actually, you know, going. We still have the best pit stops, which is lovely to see. Did have a bit of an error on this one. But yeah, it's a bit un unfortunate there that we actually did have that uh, incident. We do lose some money from finish position and the streak, but it's still it's still acceptable. Um, it's just a bit annoying that we fall back under safety car like that, but I can understand why. So Noda also rates up to 86, which is really, really nice. And I think we're also going to go ahead here and just get everything sorted. And we're going to have to probably end the episode here. Again, I did say that I want to finish everything. But both races did have kind of an interesting one. The wet Brazil there did cause a little bit of mayhem. And I did decide to end up, you know, explaining how tie calculation works, strategy works to some degree. So, yeah, that's on me. ATL start today. We also have, of course, the failed underfloor, destroyed suspension. We need to replace those. We also have the research for the rear wing finished. Do we want to do a new another one right away? Maybe. How would the front wing be? Front wing would be better for a lot of the things, honestly. And our DRS effectiveness is already pretty high. Uh, we also have ATR, so we could potentially do something like this. It would still be okay. It's not a huge boost by any means. So, what if we put it into the rear wing instead? Let's have a look here. It's going to boost the DRS effectiveness quite 
a lot, which of course is nice, but we don't need to have it super high. 80% is more than enough. So this too isn't anything, you know, massive. What I am thinking we do is probably do it the suspension maybe. We'll have to see. Again, we do have a lot of time here to choose. We have two months. But if we are to do a rear wing project or a front wing project, it needs to be sided now. So what I'm thinking that we're going to do here is also have a look at the underfloor. Let's just check because that might actually give us better results in both of those. And it does look like that it will, although we are already pretty, pretty high on the underfloor. What I think we're going to do is just do one more rear wing project. Um, I do like the RS effectiveness. The top speed is nice too. It just gives us a little bit of cornering. Front wing project will give us more, of course. But um, I think for now, we'll just do one more rear wing. Again, it is probably not the best thing to do. Honestly, probably a bit biased on my uh, point of view here. But we can actually put six engineers on this too. And as you can see, we've done 26th of November, which will allow us one more project here. Uh, 28th of November. This too would allow us one more project. 30th. Just about enough. So let's do that. Again, we're trying to just maximize research here towards the end of the season. Uh, which would actually help with a leveled up design center. For now though, um, we have two races to go. So we're going to manufacture the car parts we're missing. Just to be on the safe side. Probably won't have, have a use for these. But it's still nice to have. Just as a, you know, precaution. With that said, we are going to be asset ending this episode here. It ended up being a bit shorter than I planned for. Because, well, a lot happened. And I hope you've enjoyed. We have, as you saw, one championship with Rick. So we'll take that with us for sure. And I uh, hope you've enjoyed. Please like, subscribe if you have. And just a reminder, tomorrow at the 3 p.m. Central European summertime, I think. We'll have to check if it actually jumped this weekend or not. But I will be streaming around then. You can actually check on the direct page. Um, a lot of people are saying they're missing my streams. They're not getting notifications. Or just generally, I'm really bad at announcing them. So I'm doing it at the end of this episode so that you will know. But yeah, we'll be streaming tomorrow for sure. With that in mind, though, again, thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed. And I do hope to see you around next time. Bye-bye.